Glory, 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 Jesus. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah, blessed be the name of the Lord. As you all are logging on tonight, give God some praise. Hallelujah. As you all are logging on, give God some glory. Hallelujah. I want you to give your city and your state. And after you type your city and your state, I want you to give God some praise. Whether it's a Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I need you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to give God some praise right where you are. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Come on, bless him tonight. Bless him tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, enter into his courts with praise. Enter into his courts with thanksgiving. So we are entering in tonight. Hallelujah. Giving God some praise. Oh, Jesus is worthy. Hallelujah. So as you all are, are chiming in tonight, as you all are coming in, give me your city and your state. Type your city and state where you're coming in from. Amen. Glory to God. And <laughs> yes, God bless you tonight. Those of you that are greeting me, God bless you. Uh, for those of you that are um, tuning in on Instagram here, Facebook here, I want you to type your city and state. And after that, I want you to share the broadcast. Can you do that tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. They are praising God on the line. So let me mute the call. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's right. Give God some praise, Sister Deborah. Yes, 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 yes. Come on. Hallelujah. We got New Jersey in the house. We got South Carolina in the house. Hallelujah. We got New York in the house tonight. Amen. Glory to God. God bless you, uh, Minister Nicola. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Sister Jennifer. God bless you tonight. Amen. We got Illinois in the house. To God be the glory. New Jersey. Hallelujah. Let me mute the line. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, Goldsboro in the house. Hallelujah. Yes, we got Wilmington, North Carolina. God bless you. Is it Gwendolyn? God bless you tonight. Bronx, New York. Yes, to God be the glory. Somebody shout to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. South Carolina in the house. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Those of you that are on the prayer line tonight, don't stop praising God. Amen. Don't stop glorifying him, but continue to lift him up. Hallelujah. Because God truly is worthy of the praise honor and the glory. Those of you that have greeted me tonight, God bless you. Those of you once again on our prayer line, stay right there. If you are praising God, don't stop. Hallelujah. Because in the midst of your praise is healing. Mm -hmm. In the midst of your praise is deliverance. I want somebody to catch this early tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Every time you praise God, there's a release unto him. Hallelujah. You are releasing unto God what is already due unto him. But if you're in a situation and you cannot praise God or the situation is consuming you, it's just too much for you. One thing you can do is open your mouth and begin to magnify God. Hallelujah. In the midst of any situation, any storm, don't lose your praise. Hallelujah. Don't lose your praise. Glory to God. God bless you, uh, Mother Shirley. God bless you tonight. Each and every one of you that has greeted me. God bless you all. I love you all in Jesus name. I really do. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. God bless you, Lakia. Sister Lakia tonight, woman of God. Blessings each and every one of you. We're going to dive right into the word. Some of you may have seen the caption. Once again, those on our prayer line, stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. <laughs> Amen. I see we have 20 callers on the prayer line tonight. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Amen. We have 26 viewers on Facebook right now. Amen. And we have a couple viewers on Instagram live. Instagram, stay right there. All right. But I need y'all to talk back to me. Okay. So I don't, so it doesn't look frozen. All right. But thank you all for the hearts. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It feels good to be back home. 
Let me say that. <laughs> Amen. It feels great to be back home. You know, I thank God. Um, I had the liberty to be with my spiritual father. Amen. Chief Apostle Samuel H. Jones Sr. And the uh, entire um, <laughs> UAIC, which stands for United Assemblies in Christ. And I thank God for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, the apostles, the bishops, the pastors. I mean, it was amazing and holy convocation. And so, you know, anytime time your leader is in holy convocation you can expect your leader to come back with a deposit hallelujah with y'all y'all not talking back to me glory to god anytime your leader goes away that's a blessing because you can rest assured and know that as your leader comes back they are coming back with a fresh revelation they are coming back with a new word hallelujah y'all not talking back to me glory to god hallelujah this is why it's important that your leader goes away I don't know who this is for tonight, but don't try to box your leaders in. And anytime your leader wants to go away and get more of God, that's a blessing. Amen. Now, I'm not going to diminish and talk about those who may not get away, but, you know, it's all right. Amen. It's all right, because when your leader goes away, just know that they're coming back with something from God for you. Amen. So there's no need to be jealous. There's no need to be envious. There's no need to have an attitude. You know, some people get upset. <laughs> you know, if their pastor goes on vacation. Let me just lay the foundation to help somebody tonight. Listen, if your leader is going on vacation, that's the time for you to pull out some money and put it in their hand and say, enjoy yourself. Y'all not talking back to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anytime. Oh, who am I talking to tonight? Oh, I hear God tonight. Anytime your leader, amen, or your spiritual parent, whoever may be in your life that is helping you to stay on a straight and narrow path. If God has commissioned for them to go out, that's a blessing. Somebody shout a blessing. It's a blessing. All right. So that's not a time for you to cut up. That's not a time for you to get upset. <laughs> Come on, but that's a time for you to rejoice and praise God because your leader is now receiving what is called a deposit. They are being deposited into, amen, because they pour out so much. Somebody caught that, right? Amen. So it's a blessing for your leader to get away and to be poured into. Amen. And God did just that for me um, there. That's right. A love offering. Just send a love offering. You know, just send something, you know, to be a blessing. Amen. Because it does take finances to do ministry. Anyway, <laughs> to God be all of the glory. Once again, I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to be back on Facebook Live. We did miss um, a couple nights last week, but I know you all probably needed a break. Amen. We have a YouTube page now where you can go and look on YouTube. And you can, if you miss a, a, a video, if you miss a broadcast, you can go on our YouTube page. And it's under Prophetess Carmen Haywood. Go and subscribe to our YouTube page if you will click that subscribe button and every time a video is uploaded or every time we're live on um, youtube you will be able to tune in and receive the word of the lord glory to god this is prophetic impact prayer and word ministry i am apostle carmen haywood amen and i thank god for the elevation i thank god for the confirmation amen um there will be a date that will be set for my official nation service amen where my chief apostle is going to facilitate that service and so I'm grateful you can look for the date if you're connected to our ministry you will know the date all right and most likely it will be here in North Carolina and so we thank God amen it's a time of celebration can y'all just put those celebration emojis up if you're not a hater tonight come on if you're celebrating with us <laughs> can you put up those celebration emojis thank you for the heart sister Sequita glory to God yes yes come on can y'all just put those those celebration hearts if you're not a hater tonight come on glory to god listen i want to say this i have suffered for this listen you all have no idea glory to god the storms and the tests amen the backlash that i had to go through amen the resentment the lies y'all not talking back to me hallelujah being called everything but a child of the most high god yeah hallelujah glory to god people coming against the ministry people slandering the ministry people saying all kinds of things that they have no business saying but they later on they come back and apologize come on i deal with that all the time but how many of you know in the midst of that let me encourage somebody because i know you're going through tonight but your elevation is on the other side 
Ah, glory to God. Let, let me help you tonight. As you go through and you outlive the lie. Mm, yeah, that's a word for somebody right there. I know they lied on you. I know they talked about you. I know you gave all your money. You gave all you had. And you know, they talked about you like a dog. And you know, they ran your name in the mud. And you know, you even had to deal with some Judases along the way. I know. I understand. <laughs> understand. I'm sorry for that, you all. Glory to God, that short interruption. Let me just send this message out real quick. Glory to God so that there's no more interruptions. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But we thank the Lord tonight. So I just want to encourage the leaders, those of you that are in ministry, keep going. Keep going. Keep going because your elevation is right in front of you. Your promotion is right in front of you. But guess what? If you, if you stop right now, I want to encourage two leaders that are about to give up. If you stop right now, you're going to forfeit all that God has deposited in you. If you stop right now, you're going to forfeit all that God has for you. Mm -hmm. If you stop right now, I, I just want to encourage two. I know it's two of you on here ready to throw in the towel because you about sick of the saints. You tired of the daggers in your back. You tired of people betraying you. I know. I know. And it's the, it's the ones that are the closest to you. I understand. Yeah. It's the ones that want to befriend you right come on it's the ones that want to get close to you see this is why you got to be careful in this season because those that want to get close to you you got to understand there's a reason why they want to get close to you yeah shut up hallelujah hallelujah unique says i need his strength come on stay with me right here unique because i got your message tonight mm. glory to god hallelujah in the midst of everything you are experiencing right now there is promotion in front of many of you. And if you stop right now, what's going to happen is the enemy is going to be mad. He's going to laugh at you. Uh-huh. Come on. He, he, he's going to say, I knew they was going to give up. Come on, just like Job. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, Job was facing so much. He lost so much. He lost so many things. And in the midst of him losing everything, he said, I still trust God. Mm. Hallelujah. He said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Oh, somebody's going to be encouraged tonight and somebody is going to come out of a pit tonight. Mm, hallelujah. Somebody is going to come out of the opinions of people. Oh, you're going to get your freedom tonight. <laughs> hallelujah. Some shackles are going to be broken tonight. I said some chains are going to be broken off of your hands, off of your feet tonight. Mm hmm. Glory to God. So we thank God tonight. We thank God for the power of prayer. We thank God for our two intercessors that have gone forth tonight that have prayed so beautifully. Amen. And we thank God for their willingness. Amen. To talk to the Father on behalf of God's people and on behalf of myself. We say thank you. Amen. Those of you that are connected to our ministry, if you join our prayer line and you have a prayer life, please let me know. All right. Amen. Because we need about three intercessors to go forth every time we're on the prayer line. Glory to God. So just inbox me and say, pastor apostle i'm ready to pray hallelujah how many of you know god has need of you amen god has need of you and you don't need a title to be able to do it either all you need is a willing heart and some clean hands is that all right glory to god hallelujah i said all you need is a pure heart and some clean hands Come on, somebody, hallelujah, to do, the to, to do the will of God and the work that God has commissioned you to do. I'm going to say it one more time for those of you that can't hear me. All you need is a clean heart. Come on, I know people go forth in ministry, but they, their heart is wicked. Come on, but God says he's looking for a, a clean heart. Come on, and some clean hands. He needs a pure heart so that he can operate and move and work through Glory to God, so that the word is not tampered, so that the word is not conjured up. Y'all not talking back to me. Hallelujah. He's looking for a true prophet that's going to speak his word in season and out of season. Mm -hmm. He's looking for a prophet that's not going to worry about the faces of the people. Because let me tell you something, in order to be elevated to apostle, let me tell you something. If I cared about the people's opinion or their faces, I would not have made it to this time of elevation in my life. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. I'm telling you what I know through the spirit of God, because if you get caught up 
I'm helping somebody tonight that's in ministry, you in leadership. If you get caught up with people, you're going to miss God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you get caught up, even in, in, yes, Lord, I hear you. Even if you compromise, ah, glory. Who am I helping tonight? Come on. There's some leaders on here. You might be a minister. You might be an evangelist. You may be a pastor. You may be a prophet. You may be of the fivefold ministry. You can't compromise. See, see, see elevation and promotion comes when you don't compromise. Come on. If I sided with the devil, do you know I would look like the devil? I would talk like the devil. Y'all not talking back to me. God wouldn't give me a true word. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. He wouldn't give me a true word for his people. And there would not be freedom in this ministry if I was on the devil's side. If I was compromising. I'm helping somebody right here. God don't want his people to compromise. Hallelujah. He said, come out from among them. Hey, glory to God. And be ye separated. That's what he said now. So to come out from among them, what that means is when God tell you to come out from that place, you got to actually come out. You can't stay, remain, go every now and then and feel like, you know, you have come out. He says, separate yourself. I know it's kind of hard because you want people to like you and you want people to accept you. We're in a time right now where everybody wants to be accepted. I'm just laying the foundation. This is not the word, but this is good. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're in a time now where everybody wants acceptance. I had to walk by myself for many years and still walk by myself sometimes. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I had to travel alone. Y'all not talking back to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even when you want the crowd to be around you. Hallelujah. Sometimes you'll find yourself by yourself so that the father can speak to your mind. I'm, I'm helping somebody. I feel the anointing being released so that, so that God can speak and deal with your heart. See, see, he don't want you to be contaminated. Hey, Shatanda Baha. Hallelujah. He don't want you to be contaminated because he wants to get the glory out of your life. Come on. He wants to get the glory out of your life. Now he'll connect you with the right people at the right time, but he wants to see if your motives are pure. Shatanda Baha. Woo, glory to God. He wants to see if your motives are pure. Woo, glory to God. Mm. Hey, hiya, bashe. Because if you're doing things for likes or if you're doing things for people to love you, let me tell you something. You're going to be jumping through many hoops for many people and you're going to find yourself depleted. But when you work for the master, hey, glory. When you work for Jesus, come on, hallelujah. Any laborers in the vineyard, hallelujah. The Bible says, let me give you Bible to back it up. The Bible says that the work is plentiful. The laborers are plentiful, but the workers are few. In other words, a, a, yes, Lord, I hear you. Hallelujah. There, there's not many laborers in the vineyard. There are not many people that want to do the work. Yeah, the harvest is plentiful. So in other words, what God has for you is plentiful, but there's not many people that want to work and get the job done don't nobody want to get their hands dirty and i'm talking about dirty when you're dealing with sin and you're dealing with people that's in sin and you got to deliver somebody hallelujah with your hands by the laying on of hands so sometimes your hands got to get dirty sometimes your knees is gonna hurt sometimes your legs are gonna hurt sometimes your body's gonna be aching hallelujah but you are working for jesus the harvest, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Yeah, when the last and evil days, but God still has need of you. And he wants to raise you up for his glory. And I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, there's five of you that are on this live and God wants to teach you through a leader. I know you at the school of the Holy Ghost. I know, I know. I know, 
I know some of y'all want to sit back because you've been hurt. I know some of you don't want leadership. I know because you done been through some stuff. People have misused you. They have mistreated you. They have abused you. I know. So you sit back in your comfort zone, but there's a calling on your life. So you need somebody that can really help you. You need somebody that can really undergird you through the power of prayer mm -hmm, and be able to see the power of God in your life and be able to help you and to develop you. Holy Ghost is speaking tonight to be able to develop you in your calling. Come on. I tell you all all the time and I'm very transparent. I had three great leaders in my life that got me to this place. If I didn't listen to the first one and I got an attitude and I left, I would not have gotten a second leader. And if I didn't listen and submit to the second leader and be obedient to God and my leader, I would not have gotten the third leader. Y'all not talking back to me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know you want to be wonderful in your own eyes, but the truth of the matter is everybody needs somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So I thank God for the impartation of my leaders. Hallelujah. I said, I thank God. And see, once you get to this place, then you're ready to grow. That's a word for many of you. Because some of you, you're, you're not growing because you're not listening. And you're not listening because you're not teachable. Oh, that's good. Write that down tonight. Hallelujah. You're not growing because you're not teachable. And you're not teachable because you're not listening. Come on. You have to be able to have ears to hear. Come on. Hallelujah. All throughout scripture, what did Jesus say? He that has an ear, just one. <laughs> right, Sister Hattie, God bless you tonight. Listen, he that has an ear, just one. Just one. That's all you need. <laughs> he gave us two, though. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Holy Ghost is speaking tonight. It up my shape. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, he that has an ear. I need y'all to share on Facebook. Did y'all share this broadcast? Or y'all still in hate, hate, hate mode? Please don't be hating. Listen, be a blessing tonight. Maybe I shouldn't use that word. What's another word for hater? It sounds kind of uh, straightforward tonight. What's another word for hater? Can somebody give me another word for hater? Don't, don't be a hater tonight. Listen, because I promise you, what you do for somebody else, God in turn will do for you. Come on. See, see, in ministry, let me help somebody. It's not a crab in the barrel mentality. If you have a crab in the barrel mentality, you won't make it to the top anyway. And the people that you're trying to pull down in the midst of it, they're not going to make it either. So you're going to find yourself. Y'all not talking back to me tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Evandis Arlene, for sharing tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. In ministry and even in the kingdom of God, yeah. What's another word for hater? Come on, can somebody give me another word for that so I can, so I can use that word tonight? Because hater is really like, you know, I don't want nobody getting upset. Somebody might say, did, did she call me a hater? Well, you know, my grandmother used to say, if the shoe fits, then you got to wear it. But see, the Bible says rejoice with them that rejoice. All right, come on, come on. The Bible says rejoice with them that rejoice. Somebody said despisers. Okay, I like that. Jealous spirit. Okay. Okay. Shady. Uh-huh. Yeah, throwing shade. <laughs> you know what? I like that, Sister Tafia. But you know what I get out of the revelation of being shady? When people shady, it's all right. Let them throw the shade. Because sometimes your light is so bright. It up by shade. Hallelujah. You need just a little bit of shade. But it still can't dim, dim your light. That was good. <laughs> that was for five of y'all right there. Hallelujah. You got people that's, that's throwing shade on you and trying to rain on, rain on, rain on your parade. We're going to park the car right here for a minute. Yeah. We're we, we just going to sit right here for about 30 seconds. Because I hear the Lord saying this is something you all need to think about. Because your time of elevation and promotion is going to come when you can rejoice with somebody else. Mm, 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 mm. Hallelujah. I'm going to say that again. Your time of elevation is going to come when you can rejoice with somebody else. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we, we just going to stay right here for a minute because somebody need to come out of that. You need to learn how to come out of that. You need to come out of that. You know, it's so many people. Let me just touch this real quick. It's so many people in the body that are not really for the body. Ooh. All right, Brother Cedric, you can you can bring it on down a little bit. I think you're using, using, using other words now. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's a shame that we have those in the body that are not for the body. Somebody going to catch that real quick. You caught that, Prophetess Nicola? You caught that? There are those that are in the body that are not for the body. Wow. I just heard the Holy Spirit say that. There are those that are in the church that are not for the church. Oh. Mm. So that ties into my message tonight. That ties in. That ties in. That ties in real good. Because what God gave me for tonight, mm -hmm. I want you all to grab Psalm 37. I want you to get your Bibles real quick. Get your Bibles real quick. We're going to read Psalm 37 real quick. This is for many of you tonight. Um, what the Lord gave me. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. She says, ill wisher, despiser. Okay. Yeah, I saw ill wisher on um, Instagram too. Yeah. Somebody on Instagram. Yeah. L let me, let me read in your hearing Psalm 37 real quick, but what God gave me, God bless you, Sherilyn. God bless you tonight. Um, did you all share on Facebook? Click that share button and then send a little heart. If you can, the Lord said, this is what he said. He said, tell my people, he said, elevation leads to your expansion. He said, but expansion, blessings to you, Apostle Gail, my brother, God bless you. Expansion is going to lead to exposure. And I said, wow. So when he began to speak to me about exposure, he said, the exposure is going to go against you, but it's going to work for you. My, my, my. Mm. He said, this exposure that is coming, mm, where God's going to reveal to you your secret enemies. Uh-oh. He said, it's also going to work for you. I said, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> right? So, yes, God bless you, Pastor Nobles. Blessings to you there in Texas. So, he said the elevation had to come first. So, another word for elevation is also promotion. Right? My stylist is on Instagram. <laughs> Blessings tonight. Listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Elevation also is promotion. So this may not be something spiritual. You may be getting promoted in the natural, but just know that your promotion, your elevation is going to bring about expansion. Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit gave me. He said, your elevation is really crucifixion. I said, God, what you say? <laughs> I had to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is how he spoke to me. I'm giving it to you all. It's going to bless you. It's going to bless you now. He said, you're elevated. Glory. Y'all pastors know what I'm talking about. Mm, glory to God. Hallelujah. Y'all pastors know exactly what I'm talking about. Anytime you're getting elevated or being promoted, even in the spirit, it's another level of crucifixion. It's another level of dying to your, dying to yourself. It's another level of being stripped. I don't know. Maybe this might be too much for some of you. Listen, tag your pastor then. Tag, tag your pastor. Tag another pastor friend. Tag a leader in the body of Christ. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Tag somebody that's in ministry. Come on. Come on. Tag somebody. Hallelujah. That can, that can understand the weight of this word. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. E elevation is also crucifixion. All right. So anytime you're being elevated, I know it seems wonderful. It's a wonderful thing, right? It's a beautiful thing, you know, and you got everybody that's celebrating with you. Some people really don't mean it. And some people do mean it. You know, some people really happy for you. And some people ain't happy for you. You know, some people wish you would have died before you got elevated. Come on. Hallelujah. Some people wish that you wouldn't have never got to the end of the finish mark. But how many of you know, when you get to the end of the finish line, hey, glory, there's another line that you got to start. There's another race that you have to run. Y'all not talking back to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It never ends. 
Mm, it never ends. So what the Lord gave me is he said, tell my people elevation also means crucifixion. All right. We're going to turn to the word in just a minute. He said, but that leads to expansion. So, you know, when we hear expansion, right, right, Minister Nicola, we get excited because we like, you know what? God's going to enlarge us, you know, but the Bible says to whom much is given, much is required, right? To whom much is given, much is required. Yeah, right? So if God has given you much, if he's given you an assignment to do for him, what that means is much is required of you. More prayer, more fasting, more giving of your time. And if you are a real leader in the body of Christ, your finances are not your finances. I just want to help somebody on tonight that's in ministry. I just want to help somebody right here, you know, who may, may be thinking about, you know, going forth in this thing called ministry. It's going to cost you some things now. It's going to cost you your finances. It's going to cost you your time. Yeah. Ha, ah, glory. The Lord woke me up at 6 a.m. I was so grateful this morning that he woke me up because that has been my prayer watch for the last five years. But see, I had been oversleeping the six o'clock prayer watch. Can I just be real and transparent? Getting up about seven. Getting up like 7.15. So I said, Lord, I missed 6 a.m. prayer. Y'all not talking back to me. Something happened over the weekend. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. I said, something. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. I feel like it's some haters on here. I feel like it's some eye watchers. You just on here to watch, but you're really not for me. I don't want to call no names. I really don't want to call nobody out tonight, but I can. I could call you out. I'm also in a season right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where it really doesn't matter. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, I could call you out. I know secretly you're hating, but you always want to say something. I already know. I know you don't like me. You don't like my ministry. I know. I understand. I got it. I got it. We, we got it. Somebody shout, God always reveals to the prophet. But see, we're in a season now. Can I help you out? The true prophets are getting ready to cry aloud and spare not. Mm. You're going to start hearing more raw word from the prophets in this season and in this hour. And I'm going to tell you why. Because God is putting a boldness in his prophets. See, we're in the last days. So you got to get it right now. You can't fake it no more. Come on, somebody. You can't have secret hate for somebody and still want to be used by God and think you're going to make it in the kingdom. The Lord says, get it right now. Because you ain't fooling nobody <laughs> but yourself. Come on here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know why the people, uh, uh, people of God in the body of Christ feel as though the leaders don't know what's going on. They feel that the prophet don't know what's going on. That You know, that they believe that... <laughs> We stuck on stupid. So you think that God, you think that God's going to give us a word, a revelatory word for the people of God. That's going to bring them out of captivity. That's going to bring them out of bondage. And you think that God is not going to tell the prophet who their real enemies are. I'm getting to my message. <laughs> Let's read Psalm 37. Come on, free yourself tonight. Free yourself tonight. Come on, free yourself tonight. Yeah, I could call some names. I really could, but it's, you know, I believe God going to deal with you. Come on here. Stop being fake and phony now. Come on. Whew. Glory to God. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a boldness. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it's a boldness that's happening because we in the last days and we don't have much time. We, we don't have much time left. It's not a lot of time left. You know, you know how people used to say, I'm going to get it right. And then I'm going to go to church. No, you need to just go to church so you can get it right. Come on. I'm going to say that again. You know how people would say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get it right first. And then I'm going to go to church. No, go to church so that you can get it right. Come on. I know COVID-19 is real. I had COVID twice and I beat it. I thank God because I could have been six feet under. 
Let, let me just testify right here. I had COVID-19 last year and in the beginning of this year. Mm -hmm. Taking one of my members to the emergency room. She had it. We didn't know she had it. I was in there praying for her. It picked her up from her house, from her apartment, and, you know, went to take her to the, to the emergency room, you know, doing the job and duty of a pastor. Glory to God. And her fever was so high when I picked her up. Hallelujah. Helped her get dressed and everything. And I thank God for it because she made it just in time. It tabashe because her lungs had filled up already and she had double pneumonia. And when we got to the emergency room, her fever was 101, but you could feel her fever going down. So I believe it was around about 105 when I picked her up. What am I saying? COVID is real. I got that part. And now COVID, uh, Delta, that's real. All of that is real. I'm not saying that it's not real. Amen. Glory to God. Get your vaccine. Get what you got to get. Do what you got to do to keep yourself healthy. Hallelujah. Amen. But what I'm saying through the spirit of God is make sure that you fellowship with the saints. Even if it's online, get what you got to get from God. Don't forsake the assembling of the saints. Come on. Don't forsake the gathering together. If your ministry is on a Zoom call, get on that Zoom call. Come on. You got to put on a suit jacket or something, a pair of earrings or something, make yourself look a little good, comb your hair, do something with yourself, <laughs> put on a little makeup, make yourself look cute, whatever you got to do, sisters and brothers, put on a little suit, do what you got to do, you know, and get into the presence of God. Amen. Come on. Don't, don't forsake his power. Don't for, that's what that means. Don't forsake his power. Stay in his presence because you're going to need it. Listen, you're going to need the glory of God in your life. Because once that light goes out, it you know what I'm talking about, daughter Asia. When that light goes out, that's no joke. It's no joke. Because the enemy now, that's his playground. Hallelujah. That's his playground. He can play on you once that light begins to go dim. You don't want your light to go out. Amen. So do what you got to do to stay in the household of God. Amen. But what the Lord, amen, is saying on tonight. Amen. Even through Psalm 37. Let's read that. Let's read Psalm 37. I, I pray that you got it tonight. If you don't have your Bible, it's okay. You can write it down. I want you to read it in your time with God. Amen. This is the Psalm of David. What does he say? He says, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against work, the workers of iniquity. Iniquity means sin, right? Verse two, for they shall soon, somebody shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb, right? They're going to wither away. Here's verse three, very powerful. Three and four, I want you to remember. Verse three says, trust in the Lord and do good. Somebody shout good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shall be fed. Mm -hmm. Verse four, delight. Somebody shout delight, delight, delight. Delight is a powerful word. Amen. Delight means to partake of. Yeah. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. We're going to read five in closing right here. It says commit. Y'all with me? Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. What you have on the altar what your petition is before him, he shall bring it to pass. But there are some things that you and I must do first, right? First, he says, fret not. Fret means don't worry. Fret not means don't worry. When God says fret not, don't be afraid. Okay? I know some of y'all got some enemies. I got hellhounds, witches, warlocks, all kinds of stuff on my heels. It's all right. Amen. Because God is our defender. Hallelujah. He's our battle axe. Come on. He's the one that's fighting for us. He's Jehovah Gabor. Come on. Hallelujah. He's the one that fights our battle, right? Hallelujah. He's also Jehovah Nisi, which means he's the Lord, our banner. And that means that he goes before us, right? So we know that God fights our battles, but he also commissioned us. Somebody shout us. Somebody shout me. Come on. He commissioned us to fight the good fight of faith. Come on. So when your enemy is coming against you, I want to help about five of y'all tonight. When your enemy is coming against you, there's still something you have to do. 
You cannot sit there and just let the enemy beat on you. You cannot sit there and let the enemy um, um, taunt you. Come on. Amen. Because you have some weapons. Ah, help me, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We have weapons. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. Come on, get out of that carnality. Come on, get out of your flesh. Come on, hallelujah. Get out of the carnal mind. Come on, come on. I want you to touch your mind tonight. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come out of your fleshly thoughts. See, this is what this is what hinders a lot of people. The fleshly thoughts. They don't have a spiritual mindset. So what does the Bible say? Glory to God. It says the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. Carnal means fleshly. Holy Ghost is teaching real good tonight. Right? Come on. Carnal means fleshly. So the moment we get out of our flesh, we can now walk in the spirit. Mm -hmm. This is why God said, do not, do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. But walk in the spirit. When we walk in the spirit, we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh, right? That means our flesh has now got to a place where it is crucified. There's that word again. Our flesh has gotten to a place to where now is dead so that the spirit man, the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Ghost can now reside in us and start working through us. Yeah, somebody needed that. That was good right there, right? Just take it. Take it. Come on. Say, I, I received the word. I received the word. Because every time you receive the word of God, it's a deposit into your spirit, man. And what's going to happen is as I'm ministering to you right now and you're receiving the word of the Lord, what's happening is there's a spiritual transformation mm, that is taking place right now. It That is going to command your spirit, not just come a, to come alive, but it's going to command your spirit to start to grow grow. All right. It's going to command your spirit to start to mature and you're going to find yourself walking in spiritual maturity. Can somebody write that down tonight? You're going to find yourself walking in spiritual maturity. Come on, sister Michelle. And what happens when you walk in spiritual maturity, your words are seasoned now. Mm, speak Holy Ghost. Your words are seasoned, but now your words carry much power. Mm -hmm. And then you can begin to walk in Luke 10 and 19, where God said in his word, behold, I've given unto you power. Mm, somebody shout power. Hallelujah. He says, behold, and that word behold means see. Mm hmm. Hallelujah. He says, see, I have given you power. Yes, God, I hear you. He says, I've given you power. Mm. He says power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. He says, and power over all the attacks of the enemy. He said nothing. Somebody shout nothing, nothing, nothing. He said nothing by any means shall hurt you. My God tonight, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so you'll find yourself being able to walk in Psalm 37 where the word of the Lord says, fret not. Why worry? Don't be afraid. You have the victory and the victory is in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Fret not thyself because of evil doers. Do you know people are going to continue to do evil until Jesus Christ comes back? Do you know there's going to be evilness, darkness in the land, and it's going to intensify? It's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. You're going to see more demonic activity than ever before because the return of our Lord and Savior is so close. Come on. But what does he say here? He says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Listen, in other words, don't even stunt them. I know that's Ebonics. I know that's kind of ghetto. But, you know, when you see people working evil, you see people doing evil. You just don't eat. The Bible says don't be envious of them. So don't even really pay attention to what they're doing. You see it. You bind it up. You loose the fire of God to burn up any attack. And you keep it moving. Amen. Come on. He says, for they shall soon be cut down. Somebody shout, this is the work of God. This is the work of God. Mm -hmm. He says, they shall soon be cut down like the grass. Come on. And they shall wither as the green herb. Right? Now here comes the command. Now this is what God is saying for us to do. Right. He's saying, listen, don't worry in the beginning. Don't worry. Right. I got it. 
It's people that's working evil against you. I got it. Don't worry about that. They're going to be cut down. He's saying, I got that part. He said, but this is what I need you to do in verse 3. Continue to trust me, says the Lord. Hallelujah. He says, continue to trust me and do good. Amen. Do you know when you're trusting God, You just it's just in you to do good. It doesn't mean that you're not going to make any mistakes. It doesn't mean that you're not going to fall. It doesn't mean that, you know, that, that you're going to find yourself making the wrong decision because that may happen, right? But listen, when you're trusting in the Lord, you're going to find yourself making better decisions. Mm -hmm. you, you're going to find yourself doing the right thing. Ah, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, tonight. Somebody needs to start making better decisions. Yes, if you find yourself, yes, Lord, I hear you. If you find yourself making the wrong decisions all the time, just check what it is. Check your source. Check your source, right? Come on, this is for the entire body of Christ. If you find yourself doing the wrong thing, making the wrong decision, saying the wrong thing, you know, just having the wrong attitude or the wrong demeanor, right? Listen, check your source. Check why you're doing what you're doing. Check the motive behind why you're saying what you're saying. Come on. Because God is saying, trust in him. He's saying, and when we trust in him, do good, right? So shalt thou dwell. Now, dwell means reside. Mm -hmm. Dwell means reside. So where we dwell, that is our residence, right? Your dwelling place is your home, right? Just want to break it down a little bit. So he says in verse three, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land right? And verily thou shalt be fed. So what you have need of is going to be supplied. Come on. God's going to meet the need. We're going to eat. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Verse four, we go to the next scripture. He said, delight thyself, delight, delight, delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. Amen. There are a few of you. Yes, Lord. I hear you. The Lord says there's about 12 of you tonight who have petitions on the altar and you need God to do it for you. You need God to give you the desires of your heart. Well, you must, somebody shout must, you must delight yourself in him. You must delight yourself in him. And what that word delight means is to um, partake of, amen, delight, you know, delight yourself in God. Hallelujah. It's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> Amen. He says, delight yourself in him and he will give you. See, a blessing from God is better than you trying to go out and do it, do it yourself. Can I just be real tonight? Come on. Has anybody ever tried to help God out? <laughs> you know, you tried to help God out and you messed it up. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. He says he will give you the desires of your heart, right? Right? It's time to make better decisions. Somebody write that down tonight because you will make better decisions and you're going to start seeing the fruit of God manifest in your life. Let's go to the next scripture. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me give you all. I got to give you, I got to go back a little bit. All right, so elevation means crucifixion. When you get elevated or promote, promoted, that's another level of dying, right? That leads to expansion. And this is also what God gave me about expansion. It's going to bless the pastors. Expansion also means more souls. So now that God expands you, he's, he's expanding your ministry because now he can trust you. Okay. So let's think about promotion on the job. We're going to start. We're going we're gonna to hit the natural. Then we're going to shift over to the spirit. Promotion at your job. You get a promotion because your boss has been watching you. You get a promotion because all the other employees have spoken well of you. You get a promotion because you come to work on time. You do your job effectively, right? There's no complaints. Everybody has given a good report about you, right? You're pleasant to work with. Come on. Holy Ghost is speaking. You're, you're given an assignment and you complete the assignment. Mm, come on. You're given a task and you don't drop the ball with the task, but you realize that the task is so important to where now you give it your all, right? This is in the natural. So, and those of you that are on the prayer line, stay right there. I see y'all. Glory to God. So on the job, when promotion comes, when they're giving out raises, they're giving out, you know, promotion. Now it's time to be elevated. Mm-hmm. Tired and messed up. Thank God. Amen. Amen, Minister Yvette. What happens is 
Now it's your time. Now it's your time. Now it's your time. Now it's your time. And when it's your time, nothing can stop it. Mm, Glory to God. (laughs) Hallelujah. Because now your boss has made up in in his mind. The team has made up in their mind. We're going to promote so-and-so. We're going to promote, you know, sir, so-and-so, miss so-and-so this day. We're going to give them what is due unto them because they have been found faithful. You caught that sister Johanna on Instagram, right? There's a promotion that is getting ready to come your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so even in the spirit, that's for some of you, God's getting ready to elevate you and promote you in the spirit. If that's for you tonight, shall I receive, I receive, I receive. Mm -hmm. So we have the elevation promotion which is the crucifixion. That's the dying. So in the natural, you got the job. So now you get the promotion. So you may have gone from, I don't know. I don't even know some of the titles at these jobs, but let me just say this. So you might have, you might go from just a worker to now a manager, right? We're going to keep it simple. (laughs) I don't know the big words. (laughs) Amen. I'm not in the corporate world like that. Glory to God. Amen. But I can, I can give you something simple, right? So you go from an employee. I love to laugh (laughs) y'all. You go from an employee, oh, I'm very transparent. I'm real. I don't know everything. Amen. There's some people out there that know so much more than me. Praise be to God. And I can learn from them. So you go from the employee, right, to now the manager. Okay? Right. So now you're the manager. Help me, Holy Ghost. Let me just give it simple. And now the manager, your duty has shifted. Mm. Ooh, glory to God. You go from now being a regular employee to where you probably had to hand your drawer in. You probably had to give, you know, give a report at the end of the day, right? You go from that now to now manager. Now your boss, your supervisor feels as though you are responsible enough. Oh, Holy Ghost is speaking. This is, this is for the kingdom right here. Mm. Glory to God. Now your boss feels as though you're responsible enough to be over other people. Yeah, because you have followed instruction for however many years your boss, your your supervisor was watching you, right? It doesn't mean you did everything perfect, but you did it according to what they, they were asking. Hallelujah. And a lot of times, yes, Lord, I hear you. A lot of times, people of God, you don't know the promotion is getting ready to come. You don't know that they're having a secret meeting about you in the office. Ah, glory. You have no idea. Hallelujah. When that promotion is getting ready to come. Because see, I felt it in my spirit when I was on my way to Baltimore. Mm. And I even posted on Facebook that day. I said, I got a feeling that something great is going to happen. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The day that my chief apostle, amen, had made it known, glory to God, hallelujah, of my letter that I received. Glory to God that my title has changed. My position in the the kingdom has changed. I felt like something great was getting ready to happen. Mm. Hallelujah. Had no idea. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I knew in the spirit something Sister May, Sister Mitzi was getting ready to happen, but I really didn't know. Ah, glory to God. But I thank God for it. And just like many of you, hey, shut up. There's something that is tugging in your spirit, telling you that God is getting ready to do something amazing in your life. Woo. Some of you, you feel like you have passed the test. Glory to God. Some of you feel like, amen, the the weight and the responsibility of where you were is now over. Mm, Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I hear the Lord saying some of you are going to go not just from that position, but God's going to allow you to retire. Hey, glory to God. Who am I helping tonight? Hallelujah. Some of you have been working for so many years in that field. Mm Mm-hmm. God's going to allow you to retire now. Hallelujah. But you're going to retire with full benefits. I hear four. That's four of you on this live right here on Facebook. The Lord says he's going to allow you to retire. Two of you are going to retire early and two of you are going to retire at the right time. Mm, Hallelujah. It's the year that you ask God. (laughs) Yes, Lord, I hear you. Hallelujah. It's the year that you ask God to allow you to retire. Mm Mm-hmm. I heard four. It's four of you on here tonight. Yeah, two of you, you ask God. Hallelujah. And then the other two is like you got to the to the time to where you have to retire, but you made it. 
<laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I made it. I made it. I made it. Mm, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Minister Nicola says me. Ah, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you going to come back with a testimony from this word tonight that has been released into your spirit for those who receive it. Amen. Somebody shout amen. So expansion, let me go back. I know I gave the natural. Here is the spiritual. So expansion in the spirit means more souls, more responsibility. All right. More ministry. Amen. Yes, Lord, I hear you. The Lord says there are some of you. Yes, God. Mm -hmm. There are some of you that are called to ministry that are watching me and can hear me very clearly. There's a few of you on our prayer line. The Lord says, he says, there are some of you that are called to ministry, but you're on a full-time position at your job. Mm. And God says for me to tell you tonight, yes, Lord, I hear you. He says that he's going to allow you to come off of that job it mm, and walk in full-time ministry. Now, this is not for everybody. Amen. Come on. This is not for everybody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is not for everybody. Let me give you all a testimony to let you know that what I just prophesied over your life, God is more than able to do it. When I moved here to Raleigh, North Carolina, I told God I didn't want to do no hair. I said, I don't want to do hair. I brought all my salon equipment. My garage is full of chairs and dryers and hair equipment, stations, everything. I have everything to set up and do hair. But I told God I didn't want to do any hair. I said, my hands are retired. <laughs> That's what I told the Lord, right? I said, just ministry, just ministry, just ministry. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. And God has done just that. Amen. I did one person's hair here, and that was on request. <laughs> Amen. But I didn't want to do it. I really didn't. Amen. I only did it because that person asked me to do it. All right. What am I saying? God has sustained me. Ah, glory to God. I had two sets of income already before I moved. So, you know, some of y'all that's saying God telling y'all to move and you don't have no finances, don't do that. Amen. Because that's not wise. The Lord would never tell you to go from one state to another without resources. Come on, because I know a lot of people that just up and move and next thing you know, they moving back. Y'all not talking back to me. Amen. So I already had income. Glory to God. Then the Lord told me, he said, I'm getting ready to send you like Abraham. He said, I'm getting ready to send you to the land that is flowing with milk and honey. This was before I moved, right? And so I obeyed the Lord. I did everything that God told me to do, right? I packed when he told me to pack, right? I did exactly what God told me to do, clean my house out and everything. Now, in my mind, I was saying, okay, I'm going to sell my house. I'm testifying, y'all, just to help somebody. I said, I'm going to sell my house, then I'm going to move. God said, no. He said, do you trust me? I said, um, yes, I do. I just got a message from my daughter. I said, uh, yes, Lord, I trust you. He said, if you trust it, hey, glory. He said, if you trust me, go to the land that I've shown you. Yeah. He said, and pick out the house that you desire. Mm, glory to God. He said, I'm going to meet the need. Hallelujah. And God did just that. So I had a home in North Carolina for me and my children, my family. We had a beautiful home already waiting for us. Listen to this. This is how God works. Because you have to go. Mm, this is a word for somebody. You have to go where God is telling you to go. Listen, that's your faith in action. If you don't ever go where God is telling you to go, you don't ever scout out the land. You don't ever walk on the land and pray, hallelujah, and believe God. Then how can it be yours? Come on. That's your faith in action. What does the Bible say about faith? The Bible says faith without works is dead. Hallelujah. If God would have told me to get on a plane and go and I didn't go, it and every time the Lord said, get on the plane, Every time he told me to drive from Philadelphia to North Carolina, hallelujah, I did exactly what God told me to do. He paid the way. Come on, somebody. He provided supernaturally. Glory to God. And even at times when I thought I didn't have it, hallelujah, the finances showed up. Glory to God. So that was an indication. I'm testifying here. That was an indication of what God had told me to do, that it was getting ready to manifest. Right? <laughs> Amen, Minister Nicola. She says, I was looking at luggage today. Come on. Hallelujah. That's walking by faith and not by sight. 
Amen. Because listen, the enemy says one thing, but God says something else. <laughs> Come on. And we have to trust God, right? Amen. So the end of the testimony, the Lord did it. Amen. The Lord did it, but I had to trust him y'all glory to God. I had to trust him just like how I trusted him in Texas. Glory to God. The Lord had me to move to Texas. We were there for 11 months. Glory to God. And then it was a situation that happened back home and I had to move back. Glory to God. But it was almost the same situation. God said, do you trust me? He said, do you trust me? Hallelujah. He said, do you trust me? But listen to this people of God. When I got to my destination, when I got here, the Lord told me exactly what to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When he made the way for me. Now, mind you, I still had my home. In Philadelphia, I hadn't sold my home yet. Glory to God. We moved in August of last year, so it has been a year. Amen. A year already. It'll be a year on the 21st of this month that we have moved and transitioned, and God has blessed. When I tell you all beyond what I could think or imagine, and I'm giving God glory in his testimony because somebody needs to know that you have to trust God in the process, and he's going to make it good. Hallelujah. He's going to make it good. He's going to make it good for you. He's going to blow your mind. Glory to God. That's what I hear the Lord saying. That's what he wants to do. He wants to blow your mind because it's going to increase your faith. Amen. As you continue to go forward in God, it's going to increase your faith. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You're going to start believing God for everything. After a while, when God tells you to do something, you're going to be obedient. You're going to start doing it. You're going to move in faith. You're going to operate in faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I did not sell my home and I'm still testifying. We moved in August of last year. I didn't sell my home until October. I went to settlement the end of October. Glory to God. And so the Lord allowed me to put my house on the market and my house sold within 30 days. Now, y'all know that's God, right? <laughs> Come on here. That's right. That's right, cousin. He is faithful. Oh, yes, he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I sold my house within 30 days, y'all, of me moving. So I was in one home in North Carolina. Then I had my home. I said, God, what's going to happen? What you want me to do? <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. But I had it up. I shame. Hallelujah. Sister Michelle said confirmation. I had to trust God. I had to step out on faith and I had to believe God. And listen, the Lord also said, leave everything. Y'all not talking back to me tonight. Hallelujah. See, sometimes you want to go forward in God, but you're not willing to leave everything. Hallelujah. I had to leave everything back in Philadelphia. Glory to God. Even things that meant things to me, you know, it meant something to me. I had to still leave it there. Hallelujah. Cause I had to still trust God in the process. Mm, glory, glory, glory. That's a word for somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And once you get yet to Bashay, yes, God, I hear you. Once you get to the place to where you're willing to leave everything, mm, what did God tell Abraham? He said, Don't worry about what you're gonna wear, don't worry about what you're gonna eat. He said, Listen, I got all of that under control. He said, Just go to the land that I've shown you in time past. Woo! Hallelujah. I came to North Carolina two years prior, two years prior to me actually moving here. Amen. We had drove down about three to four times, looked at houses. But how many of you know it wasn't the right timing? Glory to God. Hallelujah. It wasn't the right timing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Yes, God, I hear you. It's the right timing of the Lord. Mm -hmm. When you get to the place to where you're in his time and in his timing. See, they, those are two different things. Those are two different things. There's the timing of the Lord and then it's his time. Let me say that again. It's the timing of the Lord and then it's his time. All right. <laughs> so somebody shout, those are two different things, two different things, right? So when it's his time, that's when it, that's when it's going to happen. Suddenly it happens quickly for you because now you're in his time. But then there's the timing of the Lord, which is that season. Y'all not talking back to me tonight. It's the season where everything is moving the way that God wants it to move. That's the timing of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Somebody caught that. All right. So let's get to the word exposure. So we talked about elevation. We talked about expansion, right? Natural and spiritual. Now you have exposure. All right. And then when God gave me exposure, I said, wait a minute, Lord. I said, I understand elevation. I understand expansion. 
He said, but yes, that's when exposure comes. So I said, okay. He said, in this time, after the elevation, after the expansion, I must expose to you who's for you and who's not for you. And so as I was in prayer today, even concerning this word, I, I got in deep prayer. I had to get in deep prayer because I said, okay, God, I understand. I said, but I need you to break it down for me. I need you to really, really give it to me. Hallelujah. I really need, I really need to understand what you're saying, God. I don't want to just say your word and not have a full understanding, right? So what he began to show me, he said, I have to tell you who's for you and who's against you. He said, so I'm going to show you what you already know. And I said, okay. He said, you've already known this. You've already seen it, but you ignored it. I said, okay, okay. And so God said, in this season of exposure, he's going to sharpen our discernment. I said, my God, my God. Mm. He said he's going to sharpen our discernment so that we'll know who's for us and who's against us so that we don't waste any more oil. Mm. So that we don't waste any more time. Oh, this is so powerful. He says, I'm showing you who's for you and who's against you so that you don't waste any more money. I said, hmm. I said, wait a minute, God. <laughs> hey, woo, ha, hallelujah. He said, I have blessed you with time. Mm. He says, I blessed you with finances. Hey, Chloe. He says, I blessed you with my oil and my anointing. Mm. He said, and you shall not waste any more of it. He said, but I have to show you first who's been taking your oil. Who's been taking your money? I said, God, wait a minute. What you say? He said, every He said, every time you give, that doesn't mean that you're giving by my command. He said, because you have a giving heart. Let me help the givers right here. God's gonna give you wisdom. He's gonna give you wisdom. He's gonna give you wisdom. He's gonna give, he's gonna give us wisdom. Come on, hallelujah, because this word touched me before I can release it to you all. He's going to give you wisdom. See, when you are a giver, you're generous. You're generous at heart. You don't mind giving. Somebody is in need, you'll give them your shirt. Somebody is in need, you'll give them your shoes. Somebody needs something, you'll just give without asking. Hey, glory to God. The Lord says he's given us wisdom in this season. Mm, hallelujah, hallelujah, so that you can keep your substance. And you know what he took me back to? He took me back to the 10 versions where five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. Amen. Let's read that real quick. We're going to read that real quick. Then we're going to turn to Romans chapter eight. Hallelujah. Because somebody needs to hear this tonight. Let's turn to Matthew 25 real quick. Matthew 25. Somebody shall Lord increase my discernment. Come on. Somebody shall Lord increase my discernment. Mm -hmm. Increase my discernment. Hallelujah. Increase my discernment. Come on. Say it. Say it until it hits your spirit. Come on. Say it till it hits your spirit. Lord, increase my it. Oh, God's going to open your eyes to see. He's going to open your ears to hear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will not be deceived, says the Lord. You will no longer be deceived. Mm, hallelujah. So the Bible says here, this is Jesus speaking. Mm -hmm. In Matthew chapter 25, we're starting at verse 1. It says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Somebody shout ten. Which had their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. Five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Verse three, and they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. So somebody shout the foolish had no oil. Okay. Verse four, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. <laughs> All right. So I want you to shout the wise had oil. You got that sister Andrea? Right. Verse five, while the bridegroom Terry while the bridegroom delayed, that's what Terry mean. There was a slight delay. They all slumbered and slept. Verse six, Jesus is still speaking here. He says, and at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go out to meet him. That word behold means see. Whenever you read the word behold in the Bible, that means see. 
So it reads like this. And at midnight, there was a cry made. See, the bridegroom cometh. Anytime you see a TH on the end of a word, that means continual. All right. So the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Verse 7. Then all the virgins arose. They all got up. The foolish and the wise. Isn't that something? <laughs> so they, <laughs> I laugh at that scripture every time. Because I'm saying, wait a minute. Didn't the wise, didn't the foolish ones know that they ain't have no oil? What they getting up for? Okay. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> so the Bible says in verse 7. <laughs> then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And I said, wait a minute. I, you know, when I read this, when I read that the first time, I said, wait, why Why did they trim their lamps? It was no oil in there. How are you going to trip? How are you going to trim a lamp that doesn't have no oil in it? Somebody shout they were foolish. All right. I didn't say they were foolish. The Bible says they were foolish, right? <laughs> All right. Somebody underline verse 7 and just go back and read it. I'm telling you, it's going to bless you. All right, let's read it again. <laughs> Sister Tracy, we are at Matthew chapter 25, verse 7. Yes, Matthew 25 and 7. <laughs> you laughing with me, Sister Geraldine? We got to get a laugh in, at least one. We got to get one laugh in. So the Bible says in verse 7, I'm going to read it again for those of y'all that missed it. Then all the virgins arose. They all got up. <laughs> Thank you for the super hearts on Instagram. You must be being blessed tonight. And trimmed their lamps. All right. They got up and trimmed them anyway. Verse 8. And the foolish said unto the wise. What did they say? Give us of your oil. For our lamps are going out. Uh oh. Verse 9. But the wise answered saying not so. Can I just insert this right here? You about to tell some people no. Because God is increasing your discernment. Mm. My, my, my. You are about to tell some people no. And when you tell them this time, Sister Christina, on Instagram Live, I see you. You're going to mean it. Why is God sharpening our discernment? Because what we have, listen to this. He wants us to be wise with it. Come on. He doesn't want us to splurge and just spend our money on everything. Come on. He doesn't want you to spend your time on everything. Come on. He doesn't want you to spend your anointing and your oil. Yes, I know it's God's anointing. Yes, we know it's the oil of the Lord. But he still wants you to use wisdom. Hallelujah. If you got the same person calling you every morning, listen to this. And I don't know who this is for. You got the same person calling you every morning for the same thing, for the same prayer. You got the same people. They still broke, busted, and disgusted. They don't want to tithe to God. They don't want to give God anything. They don't want to worship the Lord. But they want to pull off of your oil. They want to pull off of your anointing. You know, they think they're going to make it into heaven off of you. When really the truth of the matter is, they need their relationship with God also. Right? Come on. That's good. Right, Sister Chandra? So the Lord is... I want you to write it down. Your finances... The oil, which is the anointed on your life and your time. Those three right there. God is going to increase our discernment concerning those three. Somebody shout, that's powerful. Come on, somebody shout, that's powerful. That's going to get us through the next few seasons. That's powerful right there. Those three right there, okay? Can somebody write them in the comments? Our time, our money, and the anointed, the oil that's on your life. Those three right there, God's going to give you wisdom on how to use it, okay? Glory to God. Let's go. Let's go back. I believe we're at verse 10, verse 9. Right. He said, not so. They said, not so. Amen. Not so. Lest there be enough for us and for you. Mm -hmm. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Right. That's what the wise versions told the foolish versions. In other words, no. We're not giving you what we have because we need to make it to the wedding feast. <laughs> Come on, we, we, listen, we need to make it to the, to the marriage. Come on, right? Verse 10, while they went to buy, now this is the foolish, while the foolish went to go buy, listen to this, the bridegroom came and they that were ready, uh-oh, went in with him to the marriage. Come on, they made it in because they were wise. They kept what God told them to keep. Come on, they didn't splurge it. They didn't give it out, you know, just, just it to anybody. Come on, right? 
The Bible says they went into the marriage and the door was shut. Oh, my, my, my. Mm, The door was shut. Listen to verse 11. Afterwards, also the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door to us. But Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Can I just insert this right here? For those of you that's really listening and paying attention to this message. If Jesus can tell the, the foolish virgins, I don't even know who you are. Why is it that we deal with people who continue to do the same thing over and over and over again? Listen to this. And we tolerate it. <laughs> Come on. You're going to get your strength tonight. Ha! Ah, glory to God. I said, you're going to get your strength in the Holy Ghost tonight. Listen. Jesus told them what? What did Jesus say? He said, and after that, the virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open unto us. Open the door to us. They felt like they had a right. Come on, Minister Nicola. That's just like people. They feel like they have a right to you. They feel like they have a right to receive. Oh, I'm helping somebody tonight. Mm. Jesus said what? He said, I know you not. Come on. Come on. So if we are children of the most high God. Come on. Hallelujah. If God is our God and we're his child, we're his children, we follow him, right? Come on. There's a boldness that is about to come to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. That's right, my Lord. There's a boldness that's about to come. Hallelujah. Because God has need of you, but he don't want to use you depleted. Mm. Hallelujah. He doesn't want to use you washed up. And he surely doesn't want to use you hurt. Hmm. That's for many of you tonight. That's for many of you tonight. He doesn't want to use you hurt. Come on. Yes, you're going to go through things, but he doesn't want to use you to the point to where you're wounded and you're still bleeding. Come on. He wants to heal you so that you can heal others. Come on. He wants to deliver you so that you can deliver others. Come on. Hallelujah. He wants to heal you in those areas that you've been wounded and hurt. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, I've been hurt by a lot of people, y'all. I could be very transparent. And mainly the ones that I trusted, those that I gave my all to, you know, those that I confided in, you know, and I had to learn to keep my mouth shut, you know, because that's ammunition for people. Let me just help somebody. The more you talk, the more they know. So the more they know, the more they gossip. And after a while, that gossip is going to come back to you and it's going to hurt you because you felt like you could confide in them. Can I, can I just help about five of y'all tonight? And God gave me this early and I was going to post it on Facebook, but I didn't. Let me give you this, this wisdom nugget right here. It's going to bless about 20 of y'all. Listen to this. The ones that you're thinking about are not even thinking about you. Hmm. You, you, can, you can bless me later. <laughs> Listen, you know how you, you're thinking about certain people, group of people, or a person they're not even thinking about you. Okay. Listen, now, now, now you can insert that seed to my personal cash app. <laughs> Cause that was a person. That was a personal word to help you for real. I don't even know my personal cash app. I think it's prophet is Carmen one. I think that's what it is. <laughs> Amen. But tonight you can sow to the ministry from, for the word. But if, if that blessed you, I'm, I'm telling you what I know. God gave me that. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. And it's to free you. Ooh, hallelujah. It's to free you. Hallelujah. It's to free you. Listen, you cannot go into the things of God bound up. Mm-mm. Can't do it. God's not going to allow you to do it. Mm, hallelujah. He'll send a prophet to, to tell you right here and right now. Mm-mm, don't do it. Don't do it. Hallelujah. Let go. Spiritual scissors. Come on, cut. It's time to cut. Come on, hallelujah. Y'all know here in this ministry, members and covenant partners, I see some of y'all tonight. Come on, get those spiritual scissors and cut. What did Jesus tell the foolish versions? He said, I don't know who you are. He knew who they were because Jesus is God in the flesh. He knew exactly who they were. Hey, glory to God. Mm. 
Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout that's wisdom. Jesus knew who the, 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 the foolish virgins were. But he told them to their face. Woo. Glory to God. Mm. I feel some strength coming on somebody tonight. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory to God. He told them to their face. I don't know who you are. I know you not. Who are you? Who are you? Because you chose to be foolish and not have no oil. Who are you? Come on. Because you chose not to obey instruction. Who are you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Sister Kia says, you are telling me something in a dream last night. We thank God for revelation. Ha, ah, glory to God. Mm. Sister Kia, we thank God for revelation. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody give God some praise. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. That's all right. We got some mad faces. How you doing? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. We bind every spirit of the evil one now. Hallelujah. We come against it now by the power and the blood of Jesus. We thank God. Hallelujah. That this word is going to continue to go forth and edify the body of Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. I seal this prayer in the blood of Jesus and I count it done. Hey, hallelujah. No weapon that's formed against us will be able to prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us in judgment will be condemned. In Jesus' mighty name. Hey, glory. For this broadcast is covered by the blood of Jesus. Even this word is covered by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And God's people will be edified tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Had to insert that prayer right there. Mm -hmm. It says, if God be for you, who can be against you? Come on. If God is for us, it doesn't matter who is against us. Right? Come on. Hallelujah. 2 Kings, verse 6 mm -hmm. and 16 says, be not afraid. Come on, don't be afraid, for there are more that are for us than those who are against us. Come on. Hallelujah. God has legions of angels backing us up. Woo. Hallelujah. The next time the devil come for you, just remind him that he got kicked out of heaven. So listen, Satan, you got kicked out for your disobedience. You wanted to be like God. So you got kicked out, and I have power over you. Yeah. I have power over you. So remind the enemy, listen, I, I have power over you, right? Second Kings 6 and 16 says what? Be not afraid. Listen, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Sometimes you got to lay your hand on your head and say, I have a sound mind. <laughs> Glory to God. Listen, I do it a lot. Hallelujah. I do it often when the enemy try to get in my thoughts and it's not the thoughts of God and it's something contrary to his word and the enemy try to come in. I say, uh-uh, I have a sound mind. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Just like the Lord anointed me and anointed my hands to lay my hands on the sick and they shall recover. You know what? This sickness is not unto death. I shall live and not die. Hey, glory. And declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. The anointing. And the oil that God is telling you not to give to everybody. The Lord says it's for you. It's for your life. It's for your family. It's for your children. Hallelujah. It's for your loved ones. Glory to God. Some of you are wasting your oil. You're wasting your time on people that really don't care. They really could care less. Hallelujah. Kenyatta said did this today. I know that's right. <laughs> I know that's right. Glory. I know that's right. Hallelujah. We on good timing. Amen. Glory to God. We almost through y'all. Just a few more scriptures. That's right. I have a sound mind. Come on, Sister Chandra. You got to do that sometime. I'm telling you, it's going to bless you. God bless you, Rhonda. Amen. Good evening to you as well. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Come on. Hallelujah. God bless you. Is it Prophet Campbell? God bless you tonight. Amen. All the leaders that are on this broadcast, God bless you all. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 39. Let's read that real quick. Can we read Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 39? I got it written down, but I want to turn to it. Is that all right? Come on. I need y'all to turn to one scripture tonight. Just turn to one scripture. If you got your tablet by you or your laptop, just type it in. Type it in real quick. Type it in, okay? 
Glory to God. Come on, type it in, type it in, type it in. <laughs> so you can say, at least you read the word tonight. Amen. Don't take my word for it. Amen. But let's read the word together. So what does the Bible say? Let's read Romans chapter eight. Thank you, um, Prophet Chanel. How are you? How have you been, Prophet Chanel? Glory to God. Romans chapter eight, verse 35 through 39. Let's read that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. And it reads, verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? That's a question. Verse 36, as it is written, somebody shall as it is written. Mm -hmm. For thy sake, we are killed all the day long. My Lord, we are accounted as sheep, as sheep for the slaughter. <laughs> Verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. This is somebody's verse right here. Through him that loves us. 38. Here's your strength right here. For I am persuaded. Some, hey, glory to God. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Nor height, nor death, I'm at 39, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, mm. which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing shall be able to separate you, hallelujah, from the love of God. You know, there are times in our lives, y'all give me about three more minutes and we're going to close. There are times in our lives that people will come, they'll come into your life and sometimes it's, a, it's designed as a trap to distract you from your assignment, right? And it gets you off course. And it's designed to, after it gets you off course, your love for God will diminish, Right? So this is why the Apostle Paul says here, listen, glory to God. This is why the Apostle Paul says here, he says, for we shall, for, I'm sorry, who shall separate us from the love of God? Tribulation or distress, persecution. So even when you're being persecuted, even when you're going through, this takes us back to the beginning of the message, all the lies. All the deceit, all that, you know, has come against you up until this point. We can't let anything separate us. God bless you, Apostle Paul. We can't let anything separate us from the love of God. That's his love for us. And that's our love to him. All right. Always remember that. That's his love for us and our love to him. Come on, because sometimes you got a praise report, Prophet Chanel. Well, make sure you jump on the line with us tonight because you have to be careful that the attack of the enemy is to make you believe that God doesn't love you. Right. That's one of his traps. Right. Because you might have messed up. You might have fallen. You know, you might have made a mistake or did something wrong. Right. And so the trap of, of the enemy is to make you feel like God doesn't love you anymore. Right. When he always loves us, his love is unconditional. The love of God is not like man. The love of God is not like man. The only way that I can love you, and I posted it on Facebook, the only way that we can love God's people is we first must have a love for him. And then he will teach us how to love his people. A lot of times we want to love the people of God. We want to love the church. We want to love the leaders. But if our heart ain't in it, after a while it's going to be deceitful. It's going to have motives. You know, it's going to come with all kinds of foolishness. And after a while, you're going to look up and be like, I'm just tired, you know, because you're going to be tired of faking, <laughs> you know, come on. We're going to be real tonight, right? Because when we're real, we get free. Come on. I want you to remember that. Write that in your notes. When I'm real, I get free. Come on. Write that in your notes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we stress that here in this ministry. The only way that God can deliver us is when we're free. I'm sorry. When we're real, then he can set us free. Amen. Thank you, Minister Nicola. There's the prayer line number. We're going to jump off of social media and we're going to stay on the prayer line just for a few minutes. And we're going to take testimonies and praise reports on the prayer line. So there's the number if y'all want to join us. Amen. If you're still up <laughs> and you're not tired, amen. Jump on the prayer line with us. Amen. We're going to conclude in just a minute. 
Hallelujah. But be very careful. And the Bible says, be not deceived. Yes, Lord, I hear you. This is for somebody. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So a lot of times, thank you, Holy Ghost. Listen to this. And I don't know who this is for. A lot of times we are reaping for what we have sown. And this is why, yes, Lord, I hear you. This is why we have to be very careful. What is it again? Those three things, how we spend our time, how we spend our money, and we cannot waste any more anointing and oil on the things that God is not telling us to. Those three, y'all got it, right? So the enemy wants you to feel like you have to stay connected to those, those, uh, the people that are disobedient or those that are compromising and what they're doing is draining you. Mm -hmm. Somebody got the answer. They're draining you of all that God has poured into you. So now you're going to walk in wisdom. Now you're going to be like the wise versions. And now you're going to keep your oil. Amen. Because the wedding feast is soon to come. Glory to God. I'm going to pin the ways that you all can sow tonight. Amen. If you were blessed tonight, be a blessing to the ministry. There's the information. There's three ways you can sow. Cash App, PayPal, and our website. Amen. We do have a ministry's website. Let me just give you all this. Amen. I want to touch on Judas real quick, real quick, because some of you have experienced the Judas spirit. All right. Some of you, Judas came after you, tried to take you out. And to no avail, it did not work. <laughs> Amen. You may face many Judas spirits. So just know that when one person has a Judas spirit and they come after you to kill you, just know that another one might rise up. I can really count almost on one hand how many of experiences I've had of a betrayal that came against me. Yeah, since I've been in ministry. All right. And it doesn't feel good. We're going to be very honest. It doesn't feel good. Um, you didn't ask for it. Jesus didn't ask to be betrayed. Come on. Judas was just in the, in the place where they were talking about um, killing the Messiah. They wanted to take him out. And Judas just so happened to be there and say, well, oh, you want Jesus? You want to kill him? Oh, I can make this happen. I know him. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. I just need about 12 of y'all to stay with me real quick right here. Do you know the one that's betraying you is not far from you, but they're very close to you? <laughs> they know your whereabouts. They know what you like. They know a whole lot of stuff about you. That's why That's why they're able to betray you. Betrayal does not come from somebody that's far away from you. They may be far away in another city or state or something like that in distance, but they know you. Judas knew Jesus very well. He was one of the 12 disciples. Come on here. He walked with the Lord. Hey, glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. He walked with the Lord. Come on. He watched him perform miracles. He saw Jesus in action. Ha, ah, glory. He said, oh, you want him? Oh, I, 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 can, I can handle that for you. Oh, y'all guard, y'all want you? Listen, I can make it happen. 30 pieces of silver. Mm, mm, mm. He was going to sell out the Messiah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm laughing y'all because listen, some of y'all got equipped tonight and God has decreased, increased your discernment. <laughs> so you're going to be able to point out your Judas and you're going to be able to say, wait a minute. I know it's you. You're the one that's about, Hey, Chloe, you're the one that's about to betray me. Wait a minute here. Come on somebody. So let's read the scripture real quick. Cause I don't want y'all to think I'm just talking. All right. <laughs> Some of y'all know the word. Some of y'all know the word. So let's turn to John. <laughs> That's right. And kissed him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He had to, he had to kiss him. You know, there has to be. But see, the kiss was not just the kiss. Listen to this. It's, That's prophetic. It was the seal. See, <laughs> before you get betrayed, the person has to let you know by doing something. So it just sealed it. 
come on. And the kiss was prophetic. Listen to this. The kiss on the cheek was prophetic because it lets us know how close. Oh, this is good tonight. How close Judas was to Jesus. He was able to kiss him. Mm. Woo. My, my, my. All right. I just felt something in the Holy Ghost right there. Hey, glory to God. Somebody got the answer. <laughs> Somebody has gotten their answer tonight. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I just saw something in the spirit. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Mm, 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 mm. Isn't God good? Woo, isn't he good? Mm, 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 mm. I feel it so strong, y'all. Hallelujah. God is so good. He's so faithful to us. Mm, 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 mm. Woo, hallelujah. He'll give you a right now word. Yes, Lord, to help you. And to strengthen you. All right. John chapter 6. I can keep on going. I can keep on going. I can stay right here for a minute. John chapter 6. Um, let's turn to 61. Real quick. Real quick. John 6 and 61. Let's read 61 to 71. All right. I'm going to read it real quick in your hearing. And it reads. And when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples had murmured at, at it. He said unto them. Do this offend you? So Jesus had told them what he was getting ready to do. And he asked the disciples, are you now offended? <laughs> Verse 62. What and if you shall see the son of man ascend up where he was before? Verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Mm. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So now Jesus is sitting and talking to the disciples. Listen to this. He says, but there are some of you that believe not. Uh-oh. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that did not believe. And who should betray him. What does the Bible say? Jesus knew from the beginning. Oh, this is so good. Those of you that's in ministry, listen, they might have started out with you. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. And betrayed you along the way. But now it's time for a decease. Listen. Listen to this. Oh, this is so good. Verse 65. And he said, what did Jesus say? He said, therefore, said I unto you that no man can come unto me except he were given unto him of my father. 66 from the time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him look at this some of the disciples fell by the wayside as they were walking with jesus can i just insert this right here they may have started out with you hey glory this is a word for many of you they may have started out with you but the time is up now come on because the betrayal is getting ready to happen. Mm. So there had to be a series of events that took place as an indication that you were about to be betrayed. Oh, this is good. Somebody shout, this is good. Mm. All right. So we got 67. Then Jesus said unto the 12, will you go also away? Verse 68. Then Simon Peter answered and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou has the words of eternal life. So wait a minute. Where shall we go, Jesus? Who shall we go? Where shall we go? You're the one that holds life. You have eternal life. Verse 69. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. <laughs> this is good, right? Verse 70. Jesus answered unto them and said, have not I chosen you 12? And one of you is a devil. Uh-oh, maybe I should use my handkerchief to cover my face. <laughs> Did Jesus just say one of them was a devil? Y'all following the word with me? This is, this is not my opinion. This is the word of God. Jesus told the 12. Now, now we read it. Some along the way fell off. And we know that Peter, James, and John, y'all give me one more minute. I'm about to close. I promise you. <laughs> Peter, James, and John were worthy to go with Jesus to the mountain. They were found faithful, right? Only three. Only three out of the 12, though. 
So it's amazing that people may go with you. They may start with you. They may run with you, but they cannot finish with you. Hey, glory to God. They cannot finish with you, says the Lord. So here we see, let's read verse 70 again. He says, having not I chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil. Uh Uh-oh, one is a devil. Verse 71, he spake unto Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it is, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the 12. So the scripture says it right here, that Jesus knew he was the one that was going to betray him. And in your time with God, I want you to read Matthew chapter 26. 20 through 25. That's your assignment. I got to leave you with some word. Okay. Matthew 26. I know, I know some of you, some of you, this is not for you. You say, I just want to hear the word. I just get on Facebook live. I don't want to do anything. Well, for those of you that want to continue with this, I want to give you some more word. Okay. It's not many. I know it's not many, but some of you, I want you to read Matthew 26, 20 through 25. Okay. Okay. Come on, we're disciples, right? So if we're disciples and we're lovers of Christ and we love him, we should love his word, okay? That's right, Matthew 26, 20 through 25, all right? 20 through 25, and this talks about Jesus saying who would betray him, all right? So it goes a little bit deeper. That's right, you got it, Sister May, Sister Mitzi, that's right. So read that in your time with God, all right? You're going to see that Judas was the one to betray Jesus, all right? Glory to God. Let me just reveal this to you all. Let me give you this last key point. God will always reveal to you what's going on. He will never leave you in the dark. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Mm-hmm. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. Yes, God, I hear you. Mm. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 2, 11. It says, God will not leave us ignorant of Satan's devices. He will always keep us up on what is going on and what we need to do. Amen. We serve a mighty God. We serve a righteous God. We serve a holy God. But we serve a God that is full of wisdom. He's the only true wise God. Amen. And so because of that, he will keep you on your feet. (laughs) Hallelujah. He will keep you in the know and in the flow of him. Ah, glory to God. The Lord says your promotion, your elevation has come. And now God is expanding you. And those of you that are pastors who are in ministry, God says this is the time he's expanding your ministry. He can trust you with more souls now. He says he's also going to expose who's for you and who is against you. The Lord also says for me to tell you tonight, he's going to give you the strength and the power to be able to say no. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Your discernment is going to increase and the boldness of the Lord shall be upon you. I decree and declare it now to be so in Jesus mighty name. Let us pray with hands lifted. Those of you that can lift your hands. Even if you could just lift one hand tonight, Father, in Jesus name, we thank you for your word on tonight, God. We thank you for your encouragement tonight. We thank you for edifying the body of Christ tonight. Oh, God, thank you, Lord God, for this time and this space that you have given us. Oh, God, together in your presence once again. Mm. Father, we thank you for this time of impartation mm -hmm, and this time of ministry. Now, Father, as I have done what you have asked me to do, mm, Father, I thank you that your word will go forth. Ah, It is already going forth and it will accomplish what it was sent out to do. Hey, no word shall fall to the ground for it is your word, Lord God. So we thank you for full manifestation now. Mm, We thank you right now, God. Yes, Lord, that we are going to spend more time with you. We're going to use our time wisely. Mm Mm-hmm. Even the money and the finances you have given us, oh God. Mm. Hallelujah. We're going to give it as you command for us to give. Mm. Father, we thank you for the anointing that rests upon your servants tonight. Hey, we thank you for the oil that rests upon your servants on tonight, God. Oh God, that they would not use it wastefully. Oh God, 
but they will use it wisely. Father, we thank you that the wedding feast is soon to come. You are soon to return and your word decrees and declares no man knows the day nor the hour in which you shall return. But Father, we know, hallelujah, that your son is on his way to rapture the church. Ah, glory to God. So Father, help us to be ready even the more. Thank you for this time of impartation. Mm. Thank you for your word on tonight. Thank you for this here, your people, on the prayer line, Instagram Live, even on Facebook. Thank you, Lord God, that your word, hallelujah, is reaching the four corners of the earth. For Jesus, you said, hallelujah, that you will not return until your word has been spread into the four corners of the earth. Oh, God. So we thank you that your word, hallelujah, has reached many cities and states on tonight. Hey, glory. And God, we thank you, hallelujah, for what you have done in this atmosphere. Hey, glory. And we bless your holy name right now, God. Oh, God, we bind the hands of the enemy. Satan, the Lord rebukes you. Hey, Shatan Baha. And we thank you right now, Father, for victory. Mm. Hallelujah over every situation and every circumstance in the mighty name of Jesus. For no weapon that's formed against us will be able to prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us in judgment shall be condemned. In Jesus' mighty name, we seal this prayer with an amen. And it is so. Amen. To God be all of the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I begin to pray, the Lord had dropped the seed amount into my spirit. For those of you that desire to sow tonight, amen. The seed amount that I heard was 25. Amen. A $25 seed. For those of you who can, amen. If the Lord has given you a different amount to sow tonight, that is fine. Amen. Whatever seed amount God has given you tonight, obey the Lord. Amen. Obey God. You know, seal what the Lord has done with your seed tonight. Glory to God. A $25 seed, amen, into this uh, powerful anointed ministry. Amen. If you were blessed tonight, glory to God. Make sure that you get your seed in the ground. If God gives you another amount, obey the Lord. Amen. Obey him because it's something great that he wants to release unto you. Glory to God. So if I could get you all, amen, to begin to sow now. Um, the cash app is P-I-P-W ministry. All right. And that's all capitals except for ministry. Glory to God. Amen. Sister Lisa says 88. The Lord told her $88 seed. We bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. That's double new beginnings. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. We just came out of Amen. August the 8th. Look at God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we bless the Lord on tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Whatever seed amount the Lord gives you. Amen. It might be double sevens. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Double completion. Amen. Just obey God. All right. Hallelujah. Every time you sow, let me encourage about 10 of you because we may only have about 10 sow tonight. Let me just encourage you. Every time you sow seed, you are sowing into yourself. You're sowing into your future. You are sowing into your destiny. Amen. If you don't ever sow anything, when it's harvest time, there will be no harvest. Amen. But when you sow, let me tell you something. And the Bible says when you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. But when you sow bountifully, you shall reap bountifully. Amen. Glory to God. So bless the ministry. Amen. Bless God tonight with your seed. Name your seed. Amen. Whatever you're believing God to do for you. It may be restoration. Amen. You may need healing. You may need deliverance and even salvation for a loved one. Amen. Let us pray for you. Amen. This is a prayer ministry. You can send all your prayer requests to our ministry email, which is P I P W. I'm sorry, P-I-P-M 1000 at gmail.com. Once again, all prayer requests can be sent. Thank you, Minister Nicola. She said, this is great ground to sow. We thank God for this ministry. Um, yes, the ministry email, <laughs> I'm getting tongue-tied, is uh, P-I-P-M 1000 at gmail.com. All right. Once again, the ministry email, you can always send your prayer request. It could be 3 a.m. in the morning. Amen. And you need prayer. You can send your prayer request once again to PIPM1000 at gmail.com. All right. We're getting ready to get off of social media and we're going to jump on the prayer line just for about a good five to 10 minutes. So if you're still up and you have a testimony or a praise report and you want to share, 
what God has done for you through this ministry, feel free to jump on the prayer line. Amen. 712-775-7031. Once again, jump on the prayer line right now. You can come off of social media. The number is 712-775-7031. The S is code 222-953-820 pound. All right. The seed amount tonight is $25 or whatever God Amen. Um, lays upon your heart to sow. Amen. God bless you all tonight. I love you too. Amen. With the love of Jesus. I really do. Amen. And I just pray tonight. Amen. That this word has strengthened you. It has encouraged you. For those of you that have been in battle. Those of you that have been in warfare. You know. Amen. There's a saying that I say often. Amen. Warfare is war that's not fair. All right. Always remember that warfare is war. That's not fair. I know it's not fair. I know sometimes you're in warfare. The enemy's fighting you and it's just not fair. Right. But it's OK, because <laughs> in the end, we win. <laughs> all right. In the end, we win. God bless you all tonight. Once again, we have PayPal, which is paypal.me slash prophetic impact. All seeds go to our ministry. You help keep our building open. And we are located at 3670 Baston Lane, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27604. All right. We still have our physical church building that is open. Amen. If you're in the North Carolina area, if you're in South Carolina, you want to come fellowship with us. Amen. Yes, we do take temperatures and yes, we do wear our masks. We still obey the CDC guidelines in our ministry. And we thank God for you even thinking about coming to fellowship with us. Amen. In our edifice. If you type in the Ezra Center in Raleigh, North Carolina, Ezra Center, it will take you right to our building. Amen. And if you're coming, just inbox me and let me know so you can be my special guest. All right. And it's every Sunday at 2 p.m. We are at the Ezra Center. Every Sunday at 2 p.m. We are at 3670 Baston Lane, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27604. All right. We are on our prayer line. We are on Facebook every Monday, every Wednesday. Um, this Wednesday, we will not have a ministry prayer line call. I do have to travel out of town again. <laughs> Amen. So this Wednesday, I do have to travel out of town. We will not be on Facebook Live on the prayer line. Mm -mm. Amen. Prayerfully, we'll come on Saturday um, at 10 p.m., which is our next call. And if not, we will see you all Sunday in our worship service. All right. We do stream live for our members and covenant partners that are in different cities and states. We do stream live on Instagram. We do stream live on Facebook every Sunday at 2 p.m. All right. So if you can't make it to the building, Make sure you get in the flow on social media. All right. God bless you all. We thank God for this ministry. Prophetic Impact Prayer and Word Ministry. I am Apostle Carmen Haywood. And I just take this time to tell you all I love you with the love of Jesus. Stay encouraged. Be encouraged. And remember, I need you to remember that your elevation, your promotion is leading to expansion. But that expansion has now led to exposure. All right. And the exposure has a double meaning. You're going to see who's not for you. You're going to see who's against you. But God is also going to expose you now. Amen. And his light is going to shine upon you. So be blessed and be encouraged. Be strengthened. God bless you all tonight. And shalom. God bless you, Instagram.